Good morning, I hope you're doing well. I wanted to talk with you today about the way emotions can weave their way into other kinds of conditions that often seem unrelated. So our emotional wounds, they drift into places that where we have our weakest links. So it doesn't matter about timing. That's the part that is really surprising and hard for most people to believe until they've experienced it through their own healing. So people often think something that happened 30 years ago, and then you had, let's say, an injury 20 years later. Now, how could emotions that happened 30 years ago have any impact on a subsequent injury? And it isn't that they caused it, it's just that if the injury is chronic and the healing from it takes time, that becomes a divot, a weak link in your body. And when there's a weak link, all of our unprocessed material can gather there. So this can happen with an injury, it can happen with an illness, it can happen with something that is just chronically out of balance. It's not really an injury or an illness necessarily, but it's just a weakness of any kind. When there's weakness, our emotional material flows into it, which is why I don't see any separation between healing the mind or the body. You know, everything becomes mixed into one soup. And that's why I'm really in favor of embodied practices and learning to get really clear through meditation and other kinds of somatic therapy where we can feel through the body all the layers of what's happening to us. So this is something that anybody can learn. You don't have to you know, have years and years of experience of yoga you know, or meditation in order to be able to learn. I have been teaching people with really not that much experience. Really, you need a willingness. And I also think it's helpful to have a mental construct of why this is useful. So when we take on a practice, if we don't really understand, like how is this supposed to help me in my life? It's hard to stay motivated. So if we come back to the topic of how do emotions impede our healing from whatever it is you want to heal, you know, if you think about it, you know, the way water flows you know, down into the lowest point, whatever your lowest point is in your life, all of your emotional wounds, not all, but many, will flow into that place. So if you're oriented to healing you know, profoundly you know, at the deepest level, then we have to go to where, where are things pooling. And in order to be able to perceive ourselves like that, we need a certain level of witness consciousness so we can see ourselves, let's just say in this moment, if I was engaging witness consciousness, I could see myself talking to you and simultaneously I might feel, I'm not actually nervous in this moment, but if I was, you know, I could simultaneously be holding space for that nervousness. I could simultaneously be holding space for whatever else was going on. And these multiple awarenesses, this capacity to hold multiple parts of ourselves and begin to sift. That's another part that's really valuable about embodied practices is for most people who don't have this skill, and it's, it's really just a muscle that you have to exercise. When you begin to perceive yourself through these different layers, then you're a little bit more aware of where is this current today's mess coming from? You know, what is the true need that needs attention right in this moment? And when we don't have that, things just bleed into each other and it becomes a lot more complicated and people then don't know, you know, what do I really need? And then they look to practitioners to tell them what they need, but really the orientation ought to be from within. So my work, I see my work with people is teaching them to feel for themselves what support that they need. What support can they give themselves? You know, what kind of soothing do they need? What kind of inner holding or reparenting is needed? And when you're doing all of that work within yourself and you're still not getting better, you know, then it's clear, okay, there's a gap and I, within myself, I can't fill this. And then you come to their practitioners and they provide you with the skill that they have and give you more tools to be able to hold yourself. But ultimately, the job of holding ourselves is something that, you know, I can't do that for you. I could only guide you to do it for yourself. 
And what I find is that so much of what ails people is a lack of knowing how to hold themselves. And it's really abstract. Here I am talking about it for quite a while and I'm sure people, <laughs> there'll be people who have no idea what I'm talking about. So I'm just trying in every way I can to say, within you, there's so much room to feel better by learning to hold yourself in ways that are not societally what's going on. It's not the norm. It's not that esoteric. It's not impossible to learn. You just need the orientation to understanding just at the first level. Hmm, it's possible that within me I have unmet needs that I could meet myself you know, if I knew I had them. And so that's a big part of my focus. And it's turning more and more, I feel, to teaching people to heal through presence. Because when we can be really present, then we feel all of what's happening for us. And the all becomes more and more and more. And not that it will be overwhelming, that it will just we can attune ourselves like an instrument. You know, we keep tuning ourselves more and more to the present. And when we're in the present, you know, there's a richness, there's so many possibilities for being supported in ways that without that awareness, you know, we're, we're struggling and we don't need to struggle. So I welcome any questions. I realize I've rambled on about many things and I hope some of them have been inspiring or useful to you in some way. So uh, I'll just pause if anyone wants to, to type anything I'm, or comment, I'd be so happy to have a chat. And if not, then I will sign off and uh, this video will be on my wall and any of you who are watching it later you're always free to weigh in. I love to hear from you. Have a wonderful day.